Hi, my name is Shanae Shocker with DevilsDigest.com, and I'm here with Devil, DevilsDigest.com, Hold Rubino Publisher. And we're wrapping up the game from ASU versus Sacramento State, the 55 shutout win for ASU. And ASU was expected to win this game, so what exactly can you take away from a game like this? Well, I think it was important to see uh, the, the offense in action, especially uh, with, with the new wide receivers uh, that you mentioned before in Taylor Kelly's interview, Demario Nelson, Jalen Strong, to go in and make sure that that passing game really takes that next step everybody expected it to take uh, once uh, all these talented newcomers uh, join the team in the fall. So I think uh, that was one huge thing to see. Um, on defense, there were some question marks. Uh, you look at a 55 no, nothing shutout and you think, well, the defense played uh, flawlessly. That's what you expected all fall camp. But folks who followed the team through fall camp knew that there were some questions at linebacker. There were some questions at the secondary. Granted, ASU played an inferior opponent. They did what they were supposed to do. But it was nice to see the defense go, go, going to get a shutout because there were some things to go ahead and work out there with players that either were brand new to the team or just players that didn't have a whole lot of experience coming, coming back from last year. So you talked about Jalen Strong and Demari Nelson. Um, the offense had 42 points in the first half, but in the second half they only had 13. So what would you attribute that to? Well, I think uh, whenever you have a second uh, second teamers out there, uh, things are not going to run as smooth as as a first team. Um, Mike, Mike Eubank, uh, you know, I think I think had an okay fall camp, but not a whole lot of experience really. So I think uh, that, that was one thing. Then he got an offensive line, which doesn't always execute his assignments as crisply as uh, the, the first team, and that's, that's another issue. Mike Riccovici, uh, coming up from a redshirt year, I'm sure there was some rust playing in his first game uh, since 2011. So I think you, you also also have those um, factors working against you. And I think really in reality, as much as uh, the coaching staff told them at halftime, we want to go ahead and keep the pedal to the metal, we want to go ahead and score another 40-some points. I think psychologically, when you're leading 42 nothing and you know you have this game well in hand after a first half, I think it's only natural that uh, maybe just take uh, the foot off the pedal a little more. A little bit, and I think that's how the is in the second half. So right now we don't know the status of Chris Young, but going into a game against an opponent like Wisconsin next week, if he doesn't, if he's not able to come back, what does that mean for the Sun Devils? That, that's going to be a huge blow. I mean, if there's any blemish uh, of this game is, is a Chris Young's injury, if it does prove to be serious at this point, like you said, we do not know what it's going to be. Um, again, when you go back to fall camp, you look at some of the issues that the defense was working with. The linebacker was one huge issue. Uh, Chris Young was moving between Will and the Spur, and they're trying to go ahead and figure out the pieces around him. He's, he is one of the most vital players on the ASU defense. You can put him right up there with Will Sutton, with Carl Bradford, with Osani, or with Alden Darby. He's a huge part of that defense. If he cannot play against Wisconsin, he cannot play against USC, Stanford, Notre Dame, that four-game gauntlet that ASU fans have been talking about for a long time. Um, that, 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 that's going to be a major issue. I think that's one player that's going to be very hard, if not near impossible, to replace. So the running and passing game was pretty unbalanced. Um, they only had 158 rushing yards. So for a team that's really focused on rushing, and we expected to see it over 200 in this game against this opponent, where did that come from? Well, I think uh, at some point you have to go ahead and give what the defense what the defense gives you, or have to, have to take, I should say, what the defense gives you. And I think Sacramento State, as you mentioned again in uh, the Taylor Kelly interview, gave a lot of passes uh, right, right down the middle. Arizona State took uh, took advantage of that. Um, I mean, Arizona State, as much as they're predicated on the run, I, I don't think they're like head in the wall uh, offense, so to speak, that are going to go to be you know three yards in a cloud of dust, see, see an eight man front and still running each and every time. They basically uh, went ahead and uh, took advantage of what uh, Sacramento State defense had in, um, in terms of shortcomings. So I think uh, that's actually a good sign to see because against a team like Wisconsin next week, I don't know so much if you're going to beat them on the ground, but uh, you can definitely beat them with a crisp passing game. Obviously, you can't take what they did today in the passing game and say, okay, so you can definitely do that against Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a different caliber of players from, from top to bottom. But I think it was encouraging to see, and like you said earlier, with so many, not with so many new parts, but some new parts of the passing game and the receiving game, I think it was good to see Taylor Kelly go ahead and click uh, with those players, just like he's been playing with them for a couple of years. And you just said Taylor Kelly really clicked with some players. He had his five touchdown career tying for most passing touchdowns in a game. But he hit at least seven or more of receivers. So where does that come into play? Well, I think uh, that uh, first of all, you got very versatile players like Marion Grass, DJ Foster. I mean, DJ Foster, if you look on the roster, he's a running back, but actually he lined up a, more, a receiver much more than he did a running back. And that's something we saw throughout camp, so it wasn't a big surprise. But uh, you just talk about versatility. Uh, Demar Nelson, not only did he catch a touchdown, he also ran uh, one, once or twice uh, during the game. Then you got a receiver like Jalen Strong, much heralded um, recruit um, from, a, from a Pierce College. 
and uh, he basically out there, uh, he was out there showing, um, you know, what, what he can do in the passing game. So no surprise over there. You got Chris Coyle, proven receiving tight end from last year. You, you, so you, you do have a lot of weapons, and it was good to see Kelly go ahead and distribute the wealth, so to speak, because last year that was, that was a huge issue. I mean, the wide receivers group, more often than not, uh, was, was subpar. It was hard for Kelly to go ahead and distribute the ball. ASU still had a pretty explosive offense, still won eight games in the year, but I think now things are going to come just much smoother for Kelly just because of that arsenal of weapons that he simply did not have last year. I think uh, if you're an Arizona State fan, you should be excited about what you saw right now in the passing game. I know it's not going to be like that every game, especially against teams like Wisconsin, Stanford, UC, and Notre Dame, but I think you saw what this offense is capable of doing just in terms of having reliable uh, receiving targets and, again, something that he did not have in big quantities last year. Definitely, and that's going to be really important taking into next week's game against Wisconsin because they're a completely different opponent. They have a good offensive line, a good quarterback, and a solid high-pressure defense. So what do you think the keys are going to be for the Sun Devils to get a W there? I know it's going to sound like a cliche, but every game is really decided to trench, is stopping the run and establishing the run. And I think uh, against a team like Wisconsin, that uh, is definitely going to come in handy. It's not that Wisconsin can't pass the ball effectively, but they're first and foremost going to go and establish a run even more than ASU does in their offense. Uh, if you can go ahead and force them to be a passing team, that can go a long way um, in, in route to a possible victory. And, and, and on defense, um, you, you basically have to go ahead and, and um, I'm sorry, on offense, you basically have to go ahead and maybe rely a little more on the passing game, maybe not too differently than you did uh, today because I think Wisconsin is going to present a much tougher run defense for Arizona State to deal with. So, again, I think the game is really decided in the trenches. Stop the run, establish a run, and I think it would be more than halfway there for uh, a win and a uh, really impressive win as it is because I speak right now, Wisconsin the top 25 team. Uh, you know, when you look at a game against Sacramento State, ASU did what they did. They scored 55 points, ho-hum. But uh, I think a win against Wisconsin uh, next week, even if it's a win by uh, last-minute field goal, is going to be much more impressive, obviously. And we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Once again, for DevilsDigest.com, I'm Shanae Shocker with publisher Hill Rubino. I don't think